Hey, good afternoon everybody. Of course, welcome to the plot. Or I should say, welcome to down home on my little bit of wasteland at the back. Before I get to the plot, uh, I'm keeping a low profile at the moment. I'm trying to keep out the way of the missus. I've just committed one of the... <laughs> One of the sins again, um, as you can see, this is a um, little nettle patch out the back, out the back of my house. It's just a bit of uh, woodland, and of course it's uh, surrounded with nettles. And I, I, I'm out here most days, just getting the, uh, getting a nice crop of them uh, by the bagful. And of course over here, I've got me, uh, I've got me little tank on the back here. So I keep, I've got about three or four compost bins on the back here, which are, uh, I like to keep well topped up. And of course, I like the any any stuff that comes off the gardens that goes into this box, and I give it a soaking with nettle juice, and it just helps it decompost down, and then before it goes into the mug bins. And of course, I've got about there, uh, I've got about a dozen of these bins here, and of course, I've got the old uh, builders bags which I use quite a lot, I've got quite a few of them, and of course, all the compost rotten down really well. And uh, next year, we'll hopefully we'll get a, a lovely big pile of of nice black compost for the year uh, for the plants. But uh, as I see, I've committed their, uh, one of their deadly sins again, and I'm just keeping out the missus's way for uh, for a half an hour before she well she cools down. And of course, what I've been up to, um, the basket which is uh, in the back garden, and uh, as you know, I like to use as much organic um, compost as I can. A little warning. Stand well clear. When you are doing this, because it absolutely reeks. Now this one takes a little bit longer to ferment than the ones in the polytunnel. Of course, and all I do is uh, and add, and add another bag to this, or a half a bag, every week. And you can start taking out once the mixture is just nice and green. Um, and of course, this is what I've been doing this afternoon. I run off a, I run off a book of that. Beautiful, nice green. If I was a plant, I would surely drink it. But it absolutely stinks. But it's beautiful stuff. And of course, what I did, I took a book full, of, bucket full of this into the back garden, and I've actually soaked the um, the washing basket, which is where all my bedding plants are in. And of course, the wife come downstairs. I thought she was upstairs busy. She's come downstairs, sat outside, and of course the first thing she says, what is that stink? <laughs> so she's, I've had to admit to, uh, to pour nettle juice on my plants, and she's way back upstairs now. <laughs> it's beautiful and sunny out here, but she'll not, she'll not sit next to that smell. So I'm, uh, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to knock the nettle juice on the head, and just um, strip of the, uh, the blood fishing bone and all. Maybe just go down and buy a bottle of uh, seaweed fertiliser tomorrow for the plants in the baskets anyway. But uh, this is great for the allotment, and uh, that's where I'm heading to now. I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna wait the way it cools off a little bit, <laughs> and then I'm gonna disappear up the allotment. I want to get started on my onions. I've got uh, I've got the Japanese onions to start taking up. All right, Tom. Are you doing the video? Yes. I'm not the, Don't be long. <laughs> I've got the uh, Japanese onions to take up at the moment, and uh, we're gonna, we've done the garlics. And see, Roger's been um, laid down low for a little bit. He's uh, going to the hospital for another operation again, so um, I'm on my own. I'll be popping up there every morning, opening the tunnels up, back when night time, watering down. I've managed to get a few seeds in there, for a few more peas in the day. Um, I'm, uh, I'm getting stronger by the day. I'm still using a crutch, but uh, as I say, I'm starting to catch up now and get, uh, get some of the crops in that I should have been in weeks ago. But uh, little jobs like feeding the croissants, uh, and this is one of the best stuff to use. If you're, um, if you're feeding chrysanthemums, a good drink of that nitrogen, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, as I say, once the blooms come on, we'll change the potash feed. It's the same with every other plant. You know, if, you're, if the fruits aren't there, give them a good drink of that. Once the fruits come on, change the potash feed. The onions, different story. They like a high nitrogen feed, but as I say with Japanese onions, I always follow the potatoes with them. So I'll, I'll show you when we go up the garden, we'll get up and on the plot, and uh, I'll show you how we grow our Japanese onions. But uh, looking at them now, uh, before I even start to pull them, I can see they're a nice bulb. But once you pull them, 
you've got all sorts of problems you might have onion rot onion rot there might have been uh, diseases in your soil anything and that's why I always try to switch my, my crops around rotation is a great thing every year I never grow the same onions in the same place I never grow my, my leeks in the same place always rotate different story the big lads you know the big showmen they have the the special trenches and everything else, you know, they grow leeks in year, year in, year out, and they have their, um, they have to the, um, put their washers on and uh, just to try and clean themselves up. I never have to bother with that because I'm, as I say, I'm moving the crops around year in, year out. And uh, but this is one of the um, the old tonics. Get your nettles in. As I say, I crop the nettles every week in here, as many as I want, hundreds of them. And I put a bag full of these bins every day. And what I can do with it, with the big heavy stuff, the big um, stuff that's coming off the garden, I can just get that soap and that'll juice in. It just helps with the decomposting. And then it'll be here for a couple of weeks and it'll go into the bins. But added to this, um, all my home compost that comes out of the home, tea bags, potato peelings, papers, little boxes, anything like that, it all goes into, the, into these and then it gets a good soap and that'll juice again. Manure on top and then we'll start again. We'll build up in the layers. But, uh, by next year, this will be fantastic. It'll be lovely, uh, lovely full bins of compost, ready to go into our greenhouses or onto our, onto our flower beds. But yeah, I might, uh, I might just be tempted to get a drink of that before, <laughs> before I go out. It absolutely stinks. But uh, I know what the wife goes on about now, when she's uh, she likes to come down and sit in the patio. And uh, but I thought it was being a bit sneaky, you see, getting the, giving the plants a good feed before she comes down, but she's got a good nose wall us and. Uh, she can smell it from a mile off. So I'm going to knock off down here, get myself away on the plot, and we'll get started on these onions. Okay, see you all again soon. Right, okay, well, I think I can give you just a little clip of uh, this guy here has caused all the problems, as you can see. That's the, uh, the washing basket, and it's absolutely fantastic. I'll just give it a couple of bucketfuls of um, good old nettle juice, and uh, the smell doesn't bother me, but it looks, abs looks absolutely fantastic. I'm over the moon with it. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, the wife could smell it in my other way, so she's way back upstairs, so I'll have to wait for the pong to disappear before she'll come back down. But yeah, uh, in the meantime, enjoy the basket, and uh, as I say, keep enjoying your plots, and uh, if you can get your yeah, flowers growing like this, well, you should be, yeah, you should be well chuffed. As I say, nettle juice is absolutely fantastic. It's, um, it's full of nitrates, but, uh, but don't forget when you're in flower to give them a good feed of potash as well, as well as the nitrogen. And uh, your baskets will be growing as well as what these are. But yeah, for the time being, I'm over the moon. And of course, my old uh, begonias are starting to come out now. I've got uh, multiple colours. Absolutely over the moon with them. Chuffed to pieces, so yeah. We'll get ourselves away from the plot and uh, we'll let this place dry out and uh, hopefully the smell will disappear within the next hour. But uh, we'll get ourselves away from the plot and we'll get started on these onions. Okay, see you all again soon. Hi everybody. Right. Cracking afternoon. You know that I've managed to escape the wrath of the wife for a couple of us. I thought I'd get myself up the plot and get started. Uh, as I say, I don't mind using the nettle juice up here. It can stench the li life out of the garden and uh, nobody boils up here. We're well used to it. Um, the amount of manures and that we use at the beginning of the year, uh, the smell don't bother us. As I say, when I'm down home I've got to be very careful when I use it down there, so I think I'll, I'll stick to the basics. Blood fish and bone, or a seaweed fertilizer. But, um, what I've done this afternoon, as I say, the croissants have been right along them. All the pots have been weeded out. Now I had to put a bit of water on last night because it's been really dry here in the northeast for the last few weeks. Really dry. So it's uh, it's not unusual for me for, for to have to water the tomatoes. Normally when they're outside, you know, you get a couple of bits of showers throughout the week and uh, it keeps them keeps them ticking over. But uh, this week they're really dry. So what I've done, I've given them a good feeding, blood fish and bone, around the roots, and I give them a good soaking last night. And then what I'll do at the end of this week. I'll give them a, I'll stir the nettle barrel up and I'll, <laughs> I'll give them a good drink of the nettle juice and that'll, that'll keep them happy. But that's that out of the way. Right, and another main thing to do this week is to get the Japanese onions up. There's a lot of people um, 
inquiring online about is these are the overwintering onions and they're quite an easy crop to grow um, as I say if you keep them weed free make sure you keep them watered in the winter especially if you're using the red variety um, like I said the electric if you let them dry up in the winter they will bolt um, and people often say to me why do you bother watering onions in the winter exactly the same thing you can get dry spells throughout the winter um, when there's no moisture on you get a wind blowing and it dries the top of the soil off and of course the bulbs are prone to drying out and they'll bolt so even in the winter if I think it's getting too dry I like to go along the watering can and just give them a, a drop of water it's an easy job to do as I say when it's pretty quiet in the winter you don't mind doing bits and pieces but uh, as I say these are, the, these are the, the Japanese ones these are the yellow and uh, I stick the, there's three or four different varieties you can use and uh, I usually stick to the same ones every year, the Centubula. They're absolutely fantastic. There's one, and it's an easy, quite an easy job. That's what I've just done. It's an absolute beauty. Now we will sit on top of the bed here. Because there's no rain forecast for the night. It's absolutely baking up here. So I'll pull all this rope and I'll just tie them. Strewn across the bed. Let them dry out. And then tomorrow morning when I come up, I can just strip them off. But uh, the easiest thing to do... And of course, you just knock the soil off the roots and just check. Make sure there's no white rot, no beasties, anything on. And it's, uh, it really is a quite easy job. Just to take one of the skins, peel them back, and of course, all the rubbish that comes off goes straight in the compost bin. As long as it's not diseased. Not to me. There's a bit of broken skin there, but that'll stop one. That'll not damage anything. And uh, by the time we we'll get through here, we'll have, a, we'll have a good few stone, <laughs> I hope, of Japanese onions to hang up. Now, the onions I pulled up from the um, from the polytunnel uh, three or four weeks ago. I had some, some spare Japanese onions, and I just planted the bulbs on the front of the polytunnel to see how they would grow. They grew pretty well, but uh, unfortunately we had to get the tomatoes in, so we lifted them, and of course they've been drying out in the shed. They're only small, they're not as big as these, but uh, I took a few down for cooking yesterday, and the taste on them is absolutely fantastic, lovely and sweet. So I'm, uh, I'm well chuffed with them. As well as your jack onions, I'm there, uh, I'm cutting them with the garlic, so I'm getting the garlic lifted. They know you all done. So it's a, it's a double whammy for us, we'll get, uh, we'll get the jack onions done, get them all cleaned up, get them hung up in the darkness in the shed, or you can put them on uh, slatted benches outside, they'll dry out just as well out there, but like I say, tonight I'll leave all these out here, I'll pull the whole row, and the second row I'll do tomorrow night, I never try to do too much at once, if I can do it one row every day, I'm well chuffed, and if you notice, in between, there's the carrots, we'll put a couple of rows of carrots in in late March, well, there's the carrots here, growing away quite nicely. No root fly, nothing on them. The onions are keep, the smell of the onions keeps the root fly away. So once again, it's companion planting, and uh, you're putting plants in that go well with each other, and uh, they do the job. But uh, that's the chap onions. I'm over the moon with them this year. I know Lynn pulled hers the other day over the back there. She was posting on there uh, on the Facebook page. Fantastic crop of onions. Good crop of there. Uh, Good crop of garlic and uh, a veg is coming thick and fast. But uh, that's what it's all about being an allotment. It's, uh, it's, it's growing what you like and, uh, and of course enjoying your crops at the end of the day. Now the beans I put in here, this is one of the apple trees here. It's grown away really well. I'm not good, but some of the peas have wrapped around it. I've got two side shoots coming off there and I've got a main shoot coming off of the um, when I'm going to turn into the espaliers. But the beans I put in, I put some um, beans hunter in. And that's in there, they're absolutely romping away. And uh, I'm over the moon with them, I've got a first class crop of uh, nice fresh green beans off them. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon. The cabbages, spouts down there, as I say, I'll give them a, a bit of rhubarb around the roots of them. If you do have club root, that's the ideal thing, just to wrap a leaf around them and they'll grow away quite nice. They're nice and dark, so what I've got to do this week, I've got to get a net. I'm going to put a line on here to the far end of the station and we're going to drip the net right across the full lot and I'm just going to keep any of the, the butterflies because the sun chains out now and the butterflies are getting there, uh, getting a bit uh, crazy now that's my uh, main crop to Ziri down there 
And of course in the bottom, we've got another crop of white potatoes, and I think the first ones are jazzy. And I'm going to have a look at them and eat. I'm sure whether they are first or second earlies. If they're second earlies, we might start digging a jazzy up in about a week's time. We'll try one just to see what it's like. And then, of course, a desiree, they can stop in until September then. No problem. They're, uh, they're a lovely potato, a nice red one. And uh, they're all in flower. And once they, once they top start dying back, like you say, we can leave them in until August, November time. No problem. Uh, August, September. And you'll get a, a first cross tuber out of them. Hopefully they'll last for right through the winter. But yeah, up and now, I'm, uh, I'm over the moon. It's a bit of a mess up that far end there. That's the raspberry bushes that I put in last year. The new crop that I sown, and uh, they're a little bit untidy. So it's a massive job I've got to do in a couple of weeks' time as they sort, and sort my way through them. And uh, you see all the new the new growth that's coming through, the nice green growth. And of course the old roots that are down below, I'll chop all them off and get all the new growth tied in. But there. Uh, over the moon with them. So that's what onion sort is. Like I can, I'll, uh, I'll leave them out tonight, let them get nice and dry, and then hopefully by the moment I come along, I can just strip all them out of leaves off and get the, get the rest of the onions hung up. Chuffed the bits with them. But they're the Japanese onions. And what we'll be doing with them, if you want to follow how we grow ours, we'll be placing them down here in one of these bottom trenches where the uh, potatoes have been. Uh, as I say, you're not starting to plant your Japanese onions. You've got right up until beginning of November before you plant them. You can start there late August, right through September, and into November. You know, it's still not too late to plant them. So what we'll do, we'll hang on as long as we can with the um, the main crop potatoes. Once they come out, give the beds a good liming, because there'd be no liming for the potatoes. Give the beds a good liming, rake them level, there's plenty of manure put in there, so that should be quite enough for the Japanese onions. And then, see, all we like to give them is a sprinkling of... Um, if a feed in January and February, it's normally a, a high nitrogen feed. Um, nitro chalk will do. We'll give them a feed of the Japanese onions and then we'll put our, our carrots in the marsh in between the Japanese onions and of course our parsnips. And that's where we'll do it every year. It's, um, as I say, if you, can, if you can move around your garden um, every year and just rotate your crops, different beds, you'll find that you get a nice, clean, growth and these are some of the Yelta Craig onions. I don't know if that sun's gonna be affecting the um the come that much but the Yelta Craig ones are absolutely romping away. There's some beautiful big onions down there. But yeah, um up and low but we pleased with the way things are going. That's a couple of new fruit trees we planted at the beginning of the year. Um, Roger had them down home though in pots. But there uh, there's an apple pain plum there I think but there uh, they're romping away. And of course uh, the red currants and black currants at the far end they're doing well. Of the moon with them, so up and now, really pleased. So we'll knock off for tonight, and then tomorrow we'll get on. We'll go down. We'll have the garlic. And we'll get some of onions on, them. and uh, I'll show you how we're getting on with the um, with the barrels, and we'll start feeding with the with the um, the nettle juice. Okay, see you all again soon. Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, okay. Completely different day today from yesterday. Sun was shining. First thing this morning was quite nice. But uh, getting up here this afternoon to start lifting some of the onions. What I did yesterday morning, uh, yesterday afternoon, I lifted two rows and I've left the centre row in because as, uh, as I say, I only like to, to, to lift the row every day and it, uh, it takes us out long to get them all cleaned up and then I put a couple of strings on them and uh, get them hung up. Now, with garlics, we've had the uh, Pretty much reception for garlics this year. Um, there's some nice, nice cloves there. We've had them drying for a couple of days. Now these are the ones that we took out the bottom polytunnel uh, before we put the um, before we put the sweet corn in that in. We had them alongside the potatoes. They're uh, they've grown pretty well. And of course, there's some nice big cloves in there. So I'll be and these are from some of the elephant garlic. And that's, a, that's some lovely cloves amongst them. I will be saving some of them. I'll be saving all of them. Uh, as I say, most of them will just get used. And there's some of the smaller um, white garlics that we had. Uh, I think these are Isla White, the soft neck varieties. But um, as I say, on the, on the whole, they haven't been too bad. Uh, what I will do, I'll save a few of these, but I've had these for about five years, these are some garlic. So what I'm planning on doing for next year, or for this year, is to send away for some new stock. They'll only buy a couple of bulbs, and out of them bulbs you'll probably get five or six cloves. So that'll do us to start with for next year again, and we'll save some more old stock. 
there's see, I always like to introduce some new stock every few years, you know, I don't like to get too long. But uh, there, but Japanese onions, well, hey, over the moon. And that's some of the, that's some of the Sensu yellow. Absolutely spot on after I've cleaned them up, taken most of the skins off them. And of course, they'll just get hung up out for the shed. And of course, not only the, um, not only the whites, but the reds. And of course, these are a little bit more difficult. Um, I stop from bolting, as I've, as I've explained, you must try and keep these as wet, as um, moist as possible through the winter. And of course, these are the red electric. Once um, once these go dry, they'll bolt straight away. I think a lot of red onions have got the same tendency to do that, um, to bolt when they get dried out. But uh, if you just follow them, a few simple rules. Uh, we'll be starting ours off on old September time, like we normally do. I'll send away to the uh, seed companies where I normally get mine from, either Kings or DT Browns. Uh, get me new stock for next year, but we'll we'll do a video on that. Uh, as I say, I'll probably use a bottom katie bed. And um, when the uh, when the desiree taties, the main crop desiree taties come out, we'll probably use that bed for the Japanese onions. And it's just a simple matter of giving it a good lightning. Doesn't need any more manure because it was well manure for the potatoes. And as I say, is what we like to do is to stagger some carrots in between the rows of Japanese onions, so you don't want to, you don't want the land too heavy manured. Um, all we'll do with Japanese onions is we'll go along with a bit of um, <coughs> sulfate ammonia in the February and March and that just gives them a little bit of a boost but apart from that the land will get nothing else, just a good lineman and there's enough feed in there to feed them onions and of course for the carrots, not too heavily over, over manured the, the carrots will grow great in between the rows so that's the whole idea of that but I'm, uh, I'm well chuffed for that now I've got two strips of land there so my next job is to sow a few rows of uh, dwarf turnips just a little snowball type they'll do I'll get them in and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to find a few bits and pieces you can try a couple of rows of varish, you can put lettuce in uh, you can put beetroot in, you know there's plenty of stuff you can sow at this time of the year I've got a pack of dwarf beans there, they'll probably go in on the bottom end there stick them in now and you'll still get a worth for the crop and uh, idea being all these crops will be finished at the back end of this year so this bed will be dormant now but it'll get a good manure in and then we'll probably go to, uh, to greens next year, the cabbage, uh, we'll get a sprout, we'll call these cabbages in there, and like I say, it's getting changed around every year, different beds, and uh, it keeps the fertility up of the bed, and it keeps it pest free, and that's, that's the whole idea of it. But uh, I'm over the moon with that, um, as I say, I've been pulling onions today, I've pulled another row at the front here, now they're just lying on the, on the bed there, they'll dry up, because there's no rain forecast here, not till this weekend anyway, so I'll make sure when I do lift them that I've seen the forecast because I like to just lie them on the, on the bed, on the air, uh, on the ground let, them, let the sun get at them for a few hours and of course just pull away the skins and that's the, uh, of course that's the result, absolutely fantastic <coughs> Whoo, and of course, strong <coughs> stronger than any onions they'll get in the shop, believe you me absolutely beautiful, first class. But that's a Japanese Essentia Yellow. There's two or three very different varieties you can get there, radar. Uh, but I like to stick to what I'm used to and stick to what grows well in this garden, as I say. Now and again I'll change me, I'll change my onions, but when it comes to the Japanese ones, I know they're first class. I know they're over winter. We've had some really bad winters in the last couple of years over here. Snow, frost, ice. And they come through it, as I say, they mightn't be growing much on top, but there's plenty of growth underneath. And that's where your problem lies with drying out. You must keep them roots moist. You know, if the top's looking dry, put a bit of water on them, because their roots down below are still growing away. And by the spring, you've got a nice big root ball there. And then once it get, the weather warms up, the way they go, and they grow away nice and strong. So as I say, end of June, the beds are cleared, and you can still get another crop in now. So that's the whole idea of it. But uh, yeah, I'll get a couple of rows of turnips in tomorrow. All it needs is raking level, that's all. Nothing special. Might scatter a bit of uh, bloodfish and bone along the rows. And then put a couple of rows of turnips in. And we'll get, a, we'll get another crop where that, uh, where that land is. I've still got a couple of trays of gladioli so I can, uh, I can plant them out along the same place. As long as this year the whole bed come, becomes empty. Nothing in it. We'll give it a good manure. 
good lining in the spring, and it's uh, it's spot on for the year uh, plastic for next year. But, uh, that's the whole idea, of, uh, as I say, of um, swapping your beds around. But uh, I'm gonna knock off tonight. I've been up here for a, a good hour now. I've been watering tomatoes. This is it's a lot cooler than night. Um, I've managed to get some of the tomatoes not watered, and uh, some of the plants that's in the top greenhouse. They say I don't like water when the sun's on them, so this is a perfect time just to stick the hose on. I'll give me chrysanthemum there, good soaking tonight, and then I'm going to call it a night. Get me to the way back down home, and uh, give me nettle barrel and a stir. But uh, I've got two or three down here, and what I've got in the, in the, the big tunnel is uh, a nettle barrel, plus I've got comfrey in it. Now, comfrey's completely different. Comfrey's a potash, and that's what you want for your tomatoes. If you're using the nettle juice, Early on in your tomatoes, that's fine. But once your flowers set, and once your fruits are on, you want a high potash feed. So that's why I put the comfrey into the same barrel, give it a good stir. Fantastic. Or, once again, you can use seaweed for your tomatoes, or just a, a general basic fertiliser from the shops. You can get them anyway, pick them up in any shop. But I like to stick in your own, your homegrown brews, and uh, I never go wrong with them. But, uh, well, that's it for, the, for this video. But I've given you a few tips, and like I say, come September, when we we'll start off for um, with Japanese onions for next year. We'll, uh, we'll do another video then. Thanks for watching. Uh, for a few new subscribers again, we've got a couple from over the pond, uh, from the States. We've got Idaho girl, uh, Idaho garden girl, and we've got um, we've got a couple of new ones so we're, uh, from the States. So welcome you to the plot. Uh, I hope you're getting some uh, some useful tips from us. And uh, just in, just uh, keep watching, keep enjoying, and uh, keep sharing all over the moon that you've, uh, that you've joined the site. So, as I say, I'm going to pop off down home now, get finished up up here, and uh, hopefully get this video online. So, as I say, keep on subscribing, keep on sharing, and uh, enjoy yourselves on the plot, okay? And I'll see you all again in the next video.